Here we are in this beautiful woodland and uh, I found the spot by one of my students telling me where it is. Not as many bluebells as I've seen in some woodlands but still I think pretty enough for us to do a couple of paintings. What I'd like to try and do today because I'm enjoying the sunshine, the early spring so much and the birds and the peace and quiet of this place because there's nobody about this time of week by one walker is do one little acrylic now and then do a, a really slab-like, I hope, loose oil painting afterwards when I've, when I've tightened on this one. So we'll do a, a small acrylic first and then try later on to go a bit further up and see if we can find a composition for an oil. We're out on a lovely day, early spring morning in May the 16th and uh, the, the way here was lovely as well because I got some smashing shots of rape as you've seen and the, and the countryside on the way here too, even finding this spot. Well I've got a, I've got a, well, I've got a pretty simple set of uh, acrylics out here as you can see. Uh, a nice range to do the sort of work, and I've got my ordinary fill bits in one round, and that should do for this job. Our composition, we'll make the most of that, painting into the light this time, and the light behind us this afternoon, I hope. The first thing to do is just to work out a composition here. And I'm going to do that with a small round. Okay, my brushes won't get that done. No tissue today, just going to flick the water off the brush. Got a nice dark ground to work on, and I want to use my hands like that just to make the composition first of all. Let's see what I'm going to fit in. Do I want to bother with this big tree on the left or not? Is that a question? About there, so halfway to about here, on, and that's going to be just on the horizon. Just know where I am, I've got a slight border. Composition's quite important, and when you've got a tree that's even half an inch out um, in your composition for what you want to show if it hits the border here where the, where the mount's going to come because we're going to have a, this is a mounted piece later um, a mounted acrylic then I, I want the tree to be within obviously and there we go that, that first bit worked out resisting slightly because I'm using quite a bit of water at the moment and I want to make a quite dark cerulean. Because this board's fairly absorbent, I'm going to have to, and it's black, I'm going to have to put several coats on, I reckon, to really make this technique work. A little bit like painting watercolour. Painting as quick as we can, because we need to get things painted within the two to three hours that uh, I've always said we need to do a landscape in if we're going to not change the light too much. That blue comes in more here now. Get a little bit of broken colour working as well. It is after all a painting we're doing, not a photograph, we're not copying everything exactly. We're enjoying being here primarily. As to how smooth you want them and to how much brush mark you want showing, well that's up to you. Right, I'm going to come down a brush in a minute, but I want to get some of the base colours in down here. I don't want to make the greens too strong to start with. I want to be... I've got a lot of blue in it first. Working right to the background here. I'm going to be using quite a few sort of glazes with these colours, I think, today to build this on back in and cut into this with the lighter colours as well shortly. Sunlight catching them up the top. 
lots of lovely cool greens happening. The shadows will start to indicate some of those now amongst these warms. Look at all these different greens that are going on down here. Just start to indicate the leaves and the different colours. Just the little brush strokes. You see I'm using my brush now downwards to get the effect of grasses and things here as well. A bit of dry brush work going on too, just scumbling over the surface to try and get the feeling of these twigs and branches back here. And masses and masses of branches coming up. All these birds singing away around us. Can't beat it. Oh. I've got my back gets very stiff sitting on a stool like this and it's hard to keep my arm up sometimes I need to use two hands but <clears throat> it's worth the pain to enjoy our pleasures you've got to put yourself through this to really get the most out of life haven't you otherwise you just sit indoors feeling miserable and that's no good there's so much more pleasure in life to try and share and keep enjoying one of the reasons I enjoy doing these films for you is because you can come out and share the pleasure that I'm getting here. Only a, <clears throat> a few days ago I was painting in America, so it's uh, lovely to get back to finding what's beautiful and can be so lovely in this country as well. But to try and get the feeling of all of these branches in the background without actually having to paint them all in. It's not easy. I'll come back with some lights in a moment and come in between these darks to bring out the pattern of the branches a bit more. When we paint against the sun we get some beautiful effects but uh, now I need to go back into the background and these trees here and lighten those up again. Get the light shining in between these branches and trees. Between the branches and of course these little bits of light will slightly be coming down and shining into the all these beautiful now the sun's just come out we've got these wonderful colours catching the light across these trees try and capture this sunlight while it's there because it won't be there for too long I have a feeling with these clouds we have to make hay while the sun shines the light goes and we have to rethink because everything goes very flat again Nobody said we have to stop painting, but we have to think carefully because if we change the values in the painting now, you see we're gradually building up this effect of a very complicated background without it actually being that complicated. At some stage too, we want to start getting in some of these flowers as well as getting the feel of these brighter colours. Really look for all these colours that are happening. See if we make it come to life a bit. change this when the light comes out again a bit but uh, let's try and get some of these in while I'm having to wait for the sunlight to come back again. So as soon as the sunlight comes out I've really got to hit this in a minute with some colour. The sun should be out any moment. I think these acrylics are not as opaque as the oils so it would have to take several coats of paint to really get things thick and thick enough. Right, here comes the sunlight again, so here I've got to really start getting into colour very, very quickly. Right, let's have a look at these flower colours. We really do need to get some, some magenta and really lovely bright colours that are in here. Find these lovely light highlights before the sun goes. Not go very long. And hopefully, you're beginning to see how a very complicated work can be brought together. 
now we've got most of this covered but actually it's it's more enjoyable because I can, I can see the, the wood for the trees if you like the anomaly and the light goes again and we've got to try and capture it all the time capturing that moment cow parsley coming on now. We're coming towards the end of uh, I think what I'm going to do here because you don't want to go too far with a painting like this. It can just become too illustrative, too dotty. We just want to uh, finish it off a bit now I think. I don't want to be too pretty pretty either because a scene like this is, is very tempting to go that direction and make it a very um, a bit over the top with it. We have got the effects of light, I think, that we were after. Put the figures just into there. Come on, I want the colour to work, but it's not really going to. Just flick a couple of figures in like that as they go past. Now I have taken them with the camera so I could have gone back and uh, I could go back and work a bit into it. I don't think I need to, it's got to be a nice loose piece that's quite, quite adequate. Just gives it a bit of scale and it shows how quickly you can give the impression of anything, even figures. Give a little bit more texture to the leaves or grasses just to feel the surfaces. Maybe a little bit of the clouds can put light into the background again, so we'll just put a little bit of light back in to have them shining through a fraction there. Eh? What do you think about there? I don't know how we're going to be able to work in it. It's got uh, a nice little feel to it. Just play a little bit more with the sunlight in the foreground. These colours have sunk a bit, which the acrylic colours do tend to do. Let's take a look at that at a distance. And there we are, our finished scene.
spot. Been photographing all around and travelling about looking for a nice. So yeah. this one seems quite nice. So we've got a standard of the oil paints. Well, there we are. We'll try a nice lively oil from here. Eh? See what we can do. It's important to me to try and catch this light while uh, it's going. Lovely light across the. So we'll put a bit of blue coming into there. And a bit more green. I want to really, really make these colours sing a bit across here. Certainly a, a lovely shade of blue going on in the background. Right over there. I must get. Really push these colours and enjoy them today. There we go. Now I want more green. Really push my colours. There's some beautiful colours going on over there which I want to get. Mixed in with this sludge. Let's find those. Look at the amount of colour I've got there already, which is rather lovely. I really want to go into that sort of turquoise green, so let's push. Let's push for that now. There. So it comes across very atmospherically. Having got that, that turquoise colour, coming up to a bit more blue into it. See, I'm still dealing with the cool blues at the moment. Really want to push these colours and enjoy. And then up into here, where the sky comes, there's a beautiful sky blue going on. Up there, which is going to be a bit more cobalt. So let's get some white and some cobalt. Find that much stronger, more azure blue. It comes right up into there and through here, down there. And then Stronger still. Perhaps a little, a little more ultramarine coming in now, up here. Wonderful colours. Just whack it in and enjoy it. I have to bring my tree through here shortly so I'm going to cover that completely. As that comes up it gets slightly warmer still, so I'm going to add a little bit of purple up into here. Let me get a bit more warmth happening with the sky up here. There we go. Look at those lovely colours we've got now. Now we'll look at the uh, cloud effects happening there. We want to gently come in there with our, our greys. I'm going to cover that white up first. Put this mid blue grey. A little tiny touch of yellow ochre into that. A little tiny touch of brown. Just to grey it down a bit. There we go. Because we've got these darker shadows coming up. The clouds up here, underneath these. Now 
now a bit more white into that. And a touch of a cooler yellow, some lemon. And we'll try and get some of these really light next to the clouds coming underneath. Creamy chunks of oil paint. Coming up into the sky there, into those clouds. Nice fluffy bits. Last word on is to enjoy. You're using oil paint and it's such a lovely thing to use, so let's enjoy it. Bits of cloud and things getting through. It's a bit more orange going on in the moment. I'm going to add a little bit of cadmium orange into that now. There's a slight feeling of reflected sunlight going on over these clouds in the background, right back here. And the warmth. Back there. And I'm going to go down a little bit of some of these dark trees first. I need to get that sorted out. Isn't it? To really get some enjoyment out of this painting. Really push these colours. Really look for some colours. Get these colours in here. Just indicate in some of these purples before we get the smaller brushes out. The old some of those background colours coming along here, some tree and stuff. I want to be almost putting it on like an abstract. Make the colour as near as you can, comparative one to another. Put it there in the right place and the right shape and hopefully your painting will just appear. Now that lovely orange which we're not going to get so easily because the light has so so changed. We had a really nice bit of sunlight on these foregrounds earlier on. And across there, very light purple. Thing is, not to stop. You've got to keep going. Because they do matter. It's not that I'm painting in great detail, it's just that I'm giving the illusion, the feeling of these forms. And uh, if you're going to try and paint a thin brush, you need a thinner brush. Nice warm. Very warm, 
beech tree leaves. And that's what's happening back in there. Looks that lot. having to play a little bit with the colours that exist now in these darker tones which is not ideal because they aren't really relevant to having these really bright sunlit pieces, sunlit pieces behind, that's the trouble. and colourful piece.
finishing off this piece in the studio um, because the weather just has been so inclement I haven't been able to go out again as I wanted to. I'm going to go back I think and do that um, triptych I was talking about. But I thought I'd pick up on that I'd enhance the photograph enough using the colours I'd already got um, to come back into this and do a, a, enough to line it up I felt. Which I hope you'll agree with now. Get full of light on a sunny day that I wanted at the time. I think that will actually about do it. And now on to our uh, next project in this. We talked about doing a triptych, this particular picture at the bottom of the camera. So I've got three small um, square canvases ready which the cat's taking a liking to one of them and I'm going to draw out the composition onto these and then just do the basics in acrylics first of all which is the reverse of what we've just been doing having just done the oil and then worked in it back in the studio I want to get some of the background in first so that I can work more quickly when I actually get out there in situ and paint this triptych actually out there okay well the idea now is to work up a um the ground, if you like, just do a basic acrylic underpainting on this so that when I go out I haven't got quite so much work to do with the oils. I should be able to work on fairly quickly. So what I want to do here at the moment is just work up some basic greys and uh, colours for a sky. It won't really matter too much about the correct colours because uh, I'm going to work oils over them later. Just to uh, give me an underpainted colour for the oils for later which I'm to work on to here. You see I've already put my um, three canvases together. I've put some battens at the back, some plywood battens, so I can keep it together for the moment. But very roughly, really simply just to block in Some colours here.
we've come out on a lovely day again. We set up here. That where we did the uh, earlier oil. The sky is a bit plain and clear, but um, I think it'll suffice for what I want to do today. We're going to have a go at now painting this acrylic in real life in situ on plein air here with the oils over the acrylics. Well, I could keep working on it, but as I'm standing here looking at it, it's about as far as I want to go with it. I think this is where we'll stop the painting for the moment. I think it's captured what I wanted to capture, and uh, that will do.